Okay, this is uh, Carl's Tech Shed, episode 2. I'm Carl, and uh, I'd just like to thank everyone who watched my last video. Um, got some interesting comments and a few interesting messages from people on there. And uh, I think the most common message I got was, uh, when are you doing the next episode? And um, I'd just like to say that the reason I've been putting it off is because my baby daughter was born the other day, on Saturday. Uh, I'm just going to pop a picture of her up there for you now. There we go. Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> well, I, we've called her Alice, and uh, yeah, she's uh, she's doing okay. She was born uh, five pounds four ounces, so she was uh, a little bit small, but she's healthy, which is important. Okay, so back to the tech shed. I've got uh, a few new additions to the tech shed. Um, obviously, I've got another monitor. Well, I've actually got two more monitors. Um, I've removed the CRT which I had, um, I've still got it, I haven't thrown it out or anything like that, I, <laughs> I couldn't do that, um, but what I did do was I moved the CRT from there, um, I've put that into storage uh, behind the tape drive, I've then moved the monitor which was in the middle there and popped that onto the web server which I'll go into detail in a moment, and the two new monitors is it's this one here, an NEC 15 inch and a GNR 153 15 inch. Um, got those for I think something like £2 something on eBay. I just popped down and picked them up from near Dagenham, which isn't that far away. So, uh, yeah, I've got a few new bits in here. Uh, the most important bit actually, which I installed the other day, you'll put notice under here is a CAT6 socket which gives me a gigabit connection into the house which means I can move uh, files um, over to my PC and laptops in the house um, instead of using the terrible um, power line adapter which I had which was only running about 6 megabits a second because wiring in the house is about 60 years old. So the cable runs out of there up here down there and then outside and into the house. Um, we've got a few new little bits here. I popped down to Ikea at the weekend, uh, well, weekend before last, and got a cork board for here. Um, got a few little knickknacks, a few batteries, that sort of thing. Um, also got these little LED USB lamps in the pound shop, which, uh, well, you can say what you like about the pound shop, but I think for a pound they're pretty damn good. Um, doesn't look like I need them at the moment, but when it gets dark out here, which is quite early now, it's about half four, it gets really dark. Um, this little lamp up here doesn't really do much um, in, in ways of seeing the keyboard, so uh, yeah, they'll come in handy. Now, this is the web server I bought. Um, this is a Dell PowerEdge SC1425. The original spec was a 2.8 gig single Xeon processor with hyperthreading um, and 512 megs of DDR2 ECC memory. But what I've done is I've upgraded that to a 3.2 gigahertz uh, Xeon and upgraded the memory from half gig, 512 megs, up to 4 gigs which is uh, the maximum that the operating system can handle. Uh, the operating system I, um, which it actually came with was uh, Windows Server 2003, which I think the COA label is still on the top there. But uh, I'm actually running Ubuntu um, web server on there at the moment. Uh, I'm only running the 32-bit edition because, uh, well, for now I don't think I really need 64-bit, even though it can handle it. But I thought I'd just play about with it, give it a go, and see how I get on. So I'll power that up for you in a moment. Uh, right, what I've got up here is a load of 36.4 gig 80-pin uh, SCSI drives. Uh, there's actually 17 of them in total. I picked them up for uh, 99 pence on eBay from uh, a seller down in South Woodham Ferries, which is not well. It's, uh, it's a little way from here, but uh, it cost me seven quid to go and get them. But eight pound for 17 SCSI drives, I don't really mind. I'll uh, probably build a, a network attached storage device, or if I get any more servers, I'll probably use them because uh, although they're only 36 gigs a piece, they actually have a standard 80 pin SCSI, so let you have a look at that in the light. Yeah, it's an 80 pin SCSI 
uh, U320 connector, which is actually also what I use in my main server here. Uh, the only difference is that I've got a couple of 146.8 gigs. Um, I think I've got a couple of 36 gigs, a 73 and an 18. Um, but I'll be I'll be rearranging them soon so I can get the best speed and capacity out of it. Okay, now this is a bit of a mess, I'll admit, but the mess has been the majority of the mess has been cleared uh, cleared up in here. Um, that is probably owing to the fact that I was able to install some shelves last week. Um, these are actually really useful because I was able to clear the majority of that stuff there. Um, her indoors was not very happy because when she said clear it out she didn't mean uh, stick it, stick most of it in the loft which is uh, what I ended up doing but the majority of it is still out here um, waiting to be sorted through. Um, if you're if you're wondering what all them VHS tapes are up there for, uh, I was given them by a family member. They were going to throw them out and uh, just sort of slipped into the conversation. They were getting rid of them, and being as I am, I volunteered to take them off their hands. So um, hopefully, I'll be able to run them through my SVHS recorder at some point and uh, see what's on them. Um, let's just take one up the top, just see what's written on there. Uh, Dragonheart, okay. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's probably some more interesting stuff on some of them. Um, but yeah, I've also got, uh, I've also picked up from the same seller, I got the uh, 36 gig hard drive from, I actually was able to get three, um, three of these power supplies uh, given to me free of charge because they didn't sell on eBay and he just wanted shot of them so he offered them to me for nothing so uh, I took them off his hands I didn't have uh, I still don't have any use from them at, at the moment but I'm sure I will in due course so I'll start at this end I was able to fish out a whole box of graphics cards which were hidden under there uh, most of them are actually quite good um, they're not the usual sort of 64 meg PCI job that you used to get a few years ago. Uh, this one's actually, uh, I think it's either 512 or 1 gig uh, Fire ATI GL. Um, pretty decent card. I mean, it's got two DVIs. It's got a, it looks like an S video, but it's not. It's actually for a set of wired up 3D glasses. Uh, if, you, if you've uh, got three, a 3D monitor, uh, some of these are a bit older, these are, what's this, an AGP, looks like uh, it's probably a GeForce 2 or something like that, probably about 64 megs. Um, got a more, inch, more powerful one here, it's GeForce 7600 GT, that's got to be at least 256 megs, something like that. But yeah, I mean, there's a whole box of about 50 graphics cards in here. Uh, the rest of the cards which I had, um, which were over on the shelves over there last time. I've, I've actually put into these plastic crates. Um, these are all the stuff, these are all the bits and pieces I had before. I just got, as I said, the usual SCSI cards, um, bits and pieces. Uh, it's actually a rather interesting card I found here, which is, uh, it's a dual output DVI with a, 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 it's actually, instead of having two ports, it's just got one um, DVI port, or something similar, and it goes over to two monitors. Um, the only problem is it's PCI Express and the, none of the systems out here have PCI Express yet um, because the server's only got uh, PCI and uh, I think it might even have an ISA slot in there, I'm not sure, but it certainly hasn't got PCI Express. Uh, in here it's just a load more cards and that which I've pulled out of various machines over the past few years and to be honest I just can't bear to part with them, I'm probably never going to use most of them but um, I'm just bit of a hoarder. Now this is quite an interesting board which I fished out of a box which again was hidden under this lot. Um, when I actually took the heatsink off the processor, it's a, uh, I believe it's a micro ATX, if you look at the back of it it's a AT standard ATX fitting but it's uh, tiny, it's just got one single PCI slot. It's got a, uh, what is that, DDR or PC133? Oh no, it's a uh, 3200, so it's a uh, DDR1, 512 megs. Uh, the processor on that uh, is actually an AMD Athlon um, 1800 plus, so it's about 1.2, maybe 1.4 gigahertz, something like that. Um, but it'd be ideal for a, a NAS or something like that, 
I actually powered the board up and it works perfectly, there's nothing wrong with it. So I'll probably put that into use in a project at some point. Uh, in here is a load more motherboards which uh, I promised last time I was going to bring in from the house um, because they're all in there. There's, it's a bit dark in here actually. There's, I don't know if you can see it but there's a load of graphics car, um, sorry, motherboards, some of them with onboard graphics. Um, the majority of them are sort of pen sort of uh, mid-range P4, there's a Core 2 Duo board down the bottom there, um, there's a couple of P3 boards but again I just can't bear to part with them. I uh, just thought I'd let you know, I just thought I'd mention I'll uh, show you one of the most important things in the shed in a little while once I've uh, shown you what else I've done. Now I've taken all of the cables out of these drawers, as you see these are empty now because uh, what was happening was I couldn't get to anything so uh, this one's still got a few cables in because I need to get another one of these blue crates but um, the majority of the cables I use the most, like, uh, we've got IDE cables, SCSI cables, it's a, it's a Firewire 800 for the Apple Mac, uh, in here I've just got USBs, um, printer cables, I think I've got a couple of external SCSIs in there as well. All of these in here I've, uh, I've taken out of there because now I can actually get to them without them falling down the back of the, uh, of the, set, uh, of the chest of drawers. Now in here, uh, also, yeah, I just thought I'd mention this is the camcorder I'm actually using. Um, you'll notice the quality is a bit better than the um, quality I used before. That's because before I was filming on a, uh, an iPod 4G, but now I've got my Sony Handycam. Uh, sort of an early Christmas present, I suppose, but um, it's it's definitely come in handy. Uh, in here is actually a load of new bits I bought on eBay for, I think I paid about five or six pounds for them without the delivery, but the delivery was about a tenner, but I'll let you have a quick look, just to so, so you can see what's in there. Um, these are actually, I believe these are out of, um, these look like a, uh, telephone systems out of an office or something but they've got some cache memory on there and they've also got a small laptop hard drive which I think is about 20 gigs or something like that. There's a couple of these in there, you see I've got the other one there. Um, there's also some, there's a quite interesting card here which I'll probably be able to use in the server at some point um, if I need to. It's, it's a freeway card, it's actually got a VGA with uh, 8 megs of onboard memory, it's got uh, a 10100 LAN card and it's also got two SCSI ports on a SCSI controller which is all built into one card which would free up a lot of PCI slots in my server. Um, I think this one is, yeah, this is another SCSI card, um, it hasn't got any cache memory on it at the moment, um, but I think that does RAID, I, I looked all these up, I think this one um, does uh, RAID, RAID 0, RAID 1 and RAID 5, but obviously without the cache memory it's not very good. Uh, there's another one there which is, I think it's almost identical, yes it is actually, I think it is identical. Um, I've got another one here which is the same as the other two but the only difference is it doesn't have the external port so it's just a single internal SCSI connector. Um, in the bottom here I've just got a load of, well I think I looked these up and these are all out of telephone systems, that sort of thing. Um, but these were a bit of a bonus to be honest because the only thing I really wanted was these ones with the hard drive on because um, I don't have many laptop hard drives and sometimes they come in handy if I'm building a, a micro ATX system or something like that because a lot of them don't have room for a three and a half inch hard drive. So the two and a half inch drives are perfect. So I'll pop all these back but as I say these were an added bonus because the only bits I wanted were these two and the SCSI cards. So uh, if, uh, if I can make use of anything else um, it will be quite handy. But I'll pop this back up there for now. Now, I also went uh, a little bit mad in the pound shop a couple of weeks ago. Um, I probably spent the best part of 20 quid on various bits and pieces. I've got um, got a load of cable ties. I've got um, what else? Did I get? Oh yeah, I got the screwdriver, uh, electrician screwdriver. I've got a load of new screwdrivers, which are. Uh, some of them are in the house. Um, got a pair of gloves which I'll probably use at some point but to be honest for a pound I wasn't really that worried whether I'm going to use them immediately or not. Um, I've got some more cable ties which actually came in very handy when I was uh, putting that LAN cable in because uh, 
I was able to tie a uh, cable tie it round to the um, to the tube which takes the power cable out here. Um, also got what else? Yeah, masonry drill bit set. Now I didn't actually have to use these um, when I put the cable in, but it was just bloody handy that I had them just in case. I mean, for the sake of a pound, even if each drill bit only lasts once, that's what twelve pence a go. I don't think that's going to break the bank. Uh, this was also from the pound shop. It's a fine precision screwdriver set, and the most important thing is it's got all of these little um, T uh, T. Uh, torque screwdrivers which are like little star shapes and um, I use them quite a lot especially on the um, compact systems and compact hard drives because if you're trying to take one of the hard, drive ca uh, hard drives out of a caddy it's, uh, it's impossible without these so for a pound I thought that was excellent. Um, this didn't actually come from the pound shop this was another eBay job um, but this, was, this is a RJ45 tester so uh, when I was running the cable out here for the network I uh, had to make sure that all of the um, cables were linked up correctly. So what this does is, um, it just you link the cable, you disconnect um, you, uh, this part. This part just comes off like this, and you'll have this out here in the shed, and um, this part will be in the house, and it'll just go through the lights about one a second, um, just from one to eight, and tell you if any cables are missing, not connected, or Mis uh, mismatched up so that was very handy because what actually happened was uh, when I put it in, even though I'd used the correct punch down tool, uh, I think it was cable 6 or 7 um, wasn't actually pushed down all the way uh, which would have meant it was it, it would have been impossible to try and diagnose any problems without that so uh, again that, I think that only cost me about two two fifty something like that and that was in the UK if, even if I bought it from China on there it'd be about the same sort of price so that's a really good price really because I think in Maplin there at least double that um, probably, if not a fair bit more I just have to find out a way of it's a bit like it's a bit like one of these Chinese puzzle boxes in here I've got to find a way of getting it all back in there so you can never get it all in the same way it came out but yeah that's a little toolbox I got uh, the toolbox wasn't actually from the pound shop. I've bought bought that in with Wilkinson, which I think that was about two ninety nine, something like that. Right then, so I'll let you have a look at this server. I do apologise. I still haven't done the video uh, regarding these tape drives yet, um, but I can assure you they're all fully working. Um, it's just that I haven't got this one connected up yet because I don't, as I think I explained last time, I don't have enough um, PCI slots in either of these at the moment to support the high voltage differential SCSI card which uh, which it requires. So um, I'll let you have a look at this server. As you can see, uh, being a server, there's no CD-ROM drive or DVD drive. So when I actually installed Ubuntu onto it, um, I had to take the lid off um, and use one of these spare drives I've got up here um, on an IDE cable and just uh, install it that way. I will warn you, it's quite noisy, so if you've got headphones on, you might want to turn your volume down a moment. That's it. As you can see, it uh, speeds up the fans sort of uh, speed up a lot when it first powers on um, but when it actually loads into it they they uh, they slow down so it's quite a handy system really uh, this little light here keeps blinking I think it's because I've disabled the um, chassis intrusion uh, so, sorry chassis intrusion I've disabled it in the BIOS and I think that's why it's giving me a problem um, so if I just hit that button it just goes blue and just let it know that I've, I'm aware of the so-called problem. Uh, not that it is a problem for me, of course. Uh, right, so I've got the 98 system switched onto this monitor. I've got the web server on this one, but I can also access the web server through the terminal um, on the Apple Mac. Now, on this one, I'll actually show you the full internet speed that I'm getting now because I can actually uh, I can actually use the internet full speed out here. Uh, before I was, I said I was only getting about six megs a second on the power line adapter, which was horrendously slow. Um, but now at least it's a lot faster. So I'll go on to this 
So I'm going on to speedtest.net and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a speed check. Um, by the way, yes, yeah, so I'll just explain how it's all connected up. I've got the uh, gigabit connection there, um, which go then goes by this red cable here into the gigabit router. Um, then I've got the Apple Mac connected to it, I've got the server, I've got the 98 system, and I've also got the web server all connected up. So everything in the shed runs through this little box which I showed you last time. So here's speed test, it's just loaded up and we should we should be getting around 30 megs a second because that's what I'm paying Virgin Media for each month. Twenty seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Yeah, to be honest I'm quite I'm quite happy with that speed because uh, it's it's usually it's, it usually jumps to around 32 or 33 megs after about 9 p.m. But getting 28 megs a second isn't that bad, to be honest. I'm quite happy about that. So uh, yeah, that's 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 uh, the main thing which um, I was quite pleased about to get was the gigabit connection installed. Now you'll notice up here I still haven't got round to fixing this uh, this graphics card. The capacitor is still sitting on the board. Uh, unsoldered so uh, I'll have to crack on with that at some point but the reason I haven't been able to do that is because my soldering iron packed up and um, when I oops, when I attempted to fix it I actually found I was quite surprised at this that the copper wire which was used to connect it up was so thin that it had just snapped I mean you look at the quality of it I I think I bought that in Maplin or somewhere like that, but the quality of the actual cable which links um, the soldering iron to the mains is just terrible. So uh, I'll have to get a new soldering iron at some point, but uh, that'll have to wait. But, um, to be honest, I'm not really too worried because I've had that over a year now and it only cost me about five or so. That's uh, not really an issue for me. Um, as you can see, like I said, I've tidied up a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> there's a uh, few boxes of computer bits down here which I've still got to sort through and hopefully I was going to try and put this other shelf up. Um, I was going to put that uh, level with the top shelf there and uh, if I've got room uh, I might even pop another shelf underneath so I've got like uh, two walls of shelving. Um, so yeah I'll, uh, I'll let you have a look at the web server. Now as you can see I'll just log in here now you won't see the password because uh, part of Ubuntu security is it doesn't let you actually see the password as you're typing it. There we go. So I've logged on to that. Yeah, uh, it's actually Ubuntu 10. Point, uh, sorry, 11.10 .10 Web Server Edition. Now, uh, if you look at that, it's. Um, Memory usage is 1%. Uh, believe it or not, it was actually jumped up to about 8 or 9% just in idle um, when I only had half a gig in there. Uh, I did actually have some 1 gig memory kicking about, but uh, I preferred to keep it in, uh, keep the I, uh, ECC running um, because the error correction codes would be, would be a lot more reliable. So as you can see, it's got it's actually only showing one hard drive in there, uh, 80 gig uh, SATA. It's not SAS, it's not serial attached SCSI, it's just normal SATA. And uh, there's actually two drives. The physical location of the drives are just here. There's one under here and there's another one under here. There's quite a lot of room in here that's probably for ventilation. There is actually room for... Um, there is actually room for a CD or DVD drive here, but to be honest, I don't really have use for it. That's probably why it hasn't been installed in the first place. Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna whip the lid off of this so you can have a look inside. So uh, I'll won't be a moment. Okay, I'm back and uh, I've taken the lid off. Uh, I've just popped the monitor to the 98 system just there, and I've popped the web server monitor just on top of this other tape library. Okay, so we'll start at the back. As you can see, uh, there's two strips of memory there. Let's see if you can see the label there. It's uh, two gigs of DDR2 ECC memory. There's two sticks there, so that's a total of four gigs. Then under here uh, is the single 
Xeon 3.2 GHz processor. I've actually got the original 2.8 up here, I think. Uh, if I can find it. Yes, here it is. That's the processor which came out of it. Uh, as you can see, it's a free, sorry, 2.8 gig, 2 meg level, uh, level 2 cache, and 800 megahertz front side bus. But that's now spare at the moment, so I'll just pop that back up there. Uh, another couple of processes I found while I was clearing out was um, what's this? A Core 2 Duo 6300, 1.86 gigahertz. And uh, I've also, I don't I have no idea where this came from, but it was, uh, I must have got it at some point, it's an uh, Opteron. Um, I can't actually tell from the lid of the processor what speed it is, but I can only assume it's probably around 2.8 gigahertz, something like that. But I'll have to look into that at some point, but it's not really much point at the moment because I haven't got any Opteron boards. But yeah, this is uh, the web server. This is. Uh, as you can see, these are all the fans which made a lot of noise when, you, when I first powered it on. These are the two drives. It's actually this drive which is uh, running the whole system at the moment. Um, Ubuntu hasn't actually used this drive, so uh, I'll just keep it in there anyway uh, for the sake of it and probably use it at some point. Now, uh, what else did I do? What else have I got here? Ah, oh, yes, uh, important. I've got my fridge here, my little mini fridge. Well, it's actually actually belongs to her indoors, but I commandeered it. So, uh, but unfortunately, there's no beer. So that'll be a, that'll probably be uh, well with a little bit of luck over Christmas. That'll have a few beers in it. But I don't I don't actually think I need to keep it switched on out here. It's quite cool, especially in winter. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I will be showing you one of the most important parts of the shed. Um, and most people are going to say to me, well, maybe it's your internet connection, or maybe it's your power, or your lights even. But actually, it'd be wrong. The actual, actually, the most important part of my shed is right here. This little lock here. This keeps her indoors and the kids out. <laughs> it gives me my own little space, my own little world, where uh, I can get away from the noise and the kids and everything, and just... Uh, yeah, as and when I can, just come out here and take a sanctuary out here. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop the lid back on the server. And uh, someone actually sent me a message earlier, I can't remember their name. Um, I'll pop the side of this server off so you can have a look what's inside it. So I won't be a moment, I'll just put the lid back on there. Right then, so the lid's back on there, and I'll just let you have a look under here. Actually, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use one of these LED lights, because I've got an internal USB port here. Now, I don't know whether you can see it, but just here is a Wi-Fi dongle, and you're probably thinking, why the hell has he got a Wi-Fi dongle uh, when he's got a gigabit connection? Um, what that's for, I'm actually running a, like a, a virtual router through that so that when I'm out here my phone can connect up to the Wi-Fi so I'm not using my data. So I'll just unplug that. I'll plug this in and I'll just go through a list of the bits that are in here. Right, that's better. Alright, so on the bottom there... Oh, we've zoomed in a bit too much. Where did that come from? Fantastic. Okay, so on the bottom, this black card here, um, this is an S350 satellite receiver card um, that receives the satellite signals from the satellite dish outside. Uh, this one here is the uh, graphics card for the single monitor, which is the one at the end. This card here is a spare scope, well, the, the internal ports are spare, I'm not using them, uh, but the external port actually links into the ATL P1000 tape drive that I've got over there. What's this one here? Oh yeah, this is the uh, video capture card for the um, VCR which is sitting on top of the server. And this is, uh, well it's actually quite unusual, um, it's a 128 meg PCI uh, NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 graphics card with dual output. It's actually got VGA and DVI, I don't know whether you can see that. It's got VGA, oh sorry, two VGAs, that's right, it's got two VGA ports on the back. And uh, obviously at the top there I've got my USB 2 card. 
which uh, I just link my digital camera or camcorder into that or any USB flash drives that I've got. Um, over here is the single processor. Again, it, this one is dual capable. Um, this is only a 2.8 gigahertz processor, but it's um, it's only got an eight, uh, sorry, a 400 megahertz front side bus. So um, I'm not even going to try and put the 2.8 gig 800 FSB processor that I took out of the other one in here, um, because most likely I'll probably fry the chipset or something silly like that. Uh, here is the SCSI backplane for the hard drives that I've got at the front. Down there, you can probably just about see it flashing. That's a little hexagonal uh, LED indicator there to give me indication of any problems, which there are none at the moment. Um, two optical drives and the hard drive up the top there. And uh, someone actually asked me why the front of this is missing, and there is a reason. Uh, when I've got the side on, it uh, actually provides a lot more airflow through to the hard drive because even as it is, it's a little bit warm, it's not overly warm, but I, I like to keep these things cool, so that's why I've uh, taken the front front plate off of that. I'll just pop the, uh, I'll just pop the side panel back on. Right then, so that's back on. Uh, I'll just let you know that I'm actually planning on building a network attached storage device for my PC in the house because I'm rapidly running out of hard drive space and I'm almost certain, I can't quite remember where they are, but I'm certain that there's got to be at least a dozen 160 gig uh, IDE drives in one of these boxes here which I, I've uh, I stripped them out of a load of faulty Freeview recorders which I had, oh, well I was given about a year ago and uh, well 160 gig IDE drives are not really that useful to me um, but if I can stick them in a in a case possibly even with this board or something similar I could probably even run something like FreeNAS and uh, have them all in a striped array so that I can use them in something similar to RAID 5 or equivalent uh, so that I can use them all as one drive so with part with a dozen drives there's 12 drives at 160 gigs that's just shy of two terabytes which well if you pop into PC world today a two terabyte drive will probably set you back about hundred pounds so if I can put one together for virtually nothing then uh, it'll save me a few quid uh, also one other thing I almost forgot was in these boxes here I've actually got well hundreds or probably about a couple of hundred pieces of uh, memory which I found in the shed um, when I was clearing out the other day. Uh, I'll just get them all out so you can have a look. Right, so I'll pop this open. Now some of it is quite ancient. I've actually got some 72 pin sims here. I think they were out of an old 486 unit I stripped down. Um, there's a 30 pin sim which is probably out of a I don't know what that's out, probably out of a 386 or a 286 machine. It's probably only about a quarter of a meg, something like that. So about 256 kilobyte. Um, in this box, the majority of these are just going to be PC133 or DDR, something like that. Nothing really exciting. Um, what have we got here? Yeah, PC133, it's probably only about 64 megs, 128 megs, something like that. Another one there, probably about 256. I think that's actually a 32 meg, which I pulled out of an old P2 system. Yeah, so it's pretty much all the same here. But I did actually find something quite interesting. I didn't actually know what these were at the time. I had to look these up. Um, I'll let you have a look here. These are uh, 256 meg memory modules out of an SGI system. Um, I can't remember the model number off the top of my head, but um, these actually work in um, these actually work in sets of six, and I've got 12 there in total, and each one is 256 meg. So there's the best part of three gigs of RAM there uh, for an SGI unit. Um, that might, I must have got that probably with a load of other computer bits because I've never had an SGI system. Well, not here, not for a long time. Anyway, it was probably about five years ago I last used an SGI system. But um, in this box here, it's very much the same sort of thing. Again, some very ancient stuff. Uh, that actually might fit one of those SCSI boards. Let's have a quick look. You know what? I think I might have found some memory for the SCSI. Let's have a look, see if that fits. 
Oh yes, look at that, perfect. Fancy that, eh? I didn't even know I'd had that. Well, I'll have to give that a go. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Uh, I've got some seven and more 72 pin sims. I'll pop these up here. Where was the rest of them? I had a few of these kicking about. Uh, where did I put them? Oh, I don't know. I'll just leave them in here for now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you can see there's there's one hell of a lot of memory in here. The majority of it is ECC, so it's, I've removed it from various servers which I've stripped down over the past 18 months or so. Um, things like uh, what was the last one I did was I think it was a compact DL280 uh, G2. It's actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is actually a PC133, but it's one one gig of PC133, which is, and it was it was huge. I don't even think they released a one gig standard PC133 because, um, sorry, I forgot to mention this is ECC, so it's only for servers, um, so you wouldn't be able to use that on PC. Um, but it's quite an interesting bit of kit there. Um, actually, I'll 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 let you have a look. It's it's actually what they've done is they've just piggybacked the chips so uh, if I zoom in a bit you can probably see that there's just one chip on top of the other so originally it would have been a 512 meg piece and they've just stuck another set of chips on each side to make it one gig and they've probably added a few more components maybe a couple of resistors and so on um, to make it up to um, the one gig but it's still a pretty interesting bit of memory there uh, it's very unusual to see chips being piggybacked nowadays. Um, I remember you used to see them in the old 286 systems and things like that. Well anyway, that's uh, pretty much all of it from my tech shed for now. Um, I'll keep you posted as to what my plans are for uh, the rest of this stuff. Um, obviously you know me, well some of you might know me, you know, I'm, by now I don't really throw much stuff out unless it's well even if it's broken I try and fix it but even if just because it's old I try not to throw stuff away um, and I'll prove it I've still got the old CRT monitor um, down there I don't know whether you can see that but it's still down there and uh, yeah this was one other thing I forgot to mention um, my Dell PowerEdge it's my old PowerEdge 2450 um, I was actually quite insulted because I put it on eBay at 99p with absolutely no reserve, just stuck it on there at 99p and nobody bought it. Um, so I thought, okay, I just want rid of the damn thing, I'll stick a couple of hard drives in it and upgrade the memory to one gig. Still, no one wanted it, so I've removed the hard drives back, I've put them back up there and, uh, well, that can probably just sit there until I find a use for it. But uh, until I do, uh, in the meantime, and I promise you now, I will get the video done on these tape libraries at some point. Um, so you'll just have to give me a few days to get that sorted out. Um, actually, I might be able to power. Oh no, I think this. I think the um, power cable for these, this one, I've actually got plugged into here. So I'm going to need to source another power cable from somewhere. Um, probably got one in there, but whether it's long enough for it is, uh, is a different matter. But anyway, thanks for watching Tech Shed again, and uh, if you've got any questions or comments or anything you'd like to say, just leave it in the comments box below, and I'll do my best to answer it or feature it in my next video if it's a question about what I've got out here. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.